Hi everyone. I am making a video about swing and clocks and complex clocking, to be precise. This is a video I've been uh, wanting to do for quite some time. And most of the people who have been watching my regular streams know a little bit about what this one is about. But I figured that doing a video on this is probably going to make things a little bit clearer than when I do things on stream because they get me in all my randomness and all that stuff along with it. So this is a focused video on the complex uh, clock patch that I've been using uh, and a few of the workarounds in case you don't have all the modules that you need to actually do this. Usually with uh, sequencers and drum sequencers in particular, um, you can set your groove template to have, for example, 8th note swing or 16th note swing uh, or some variants of that. And uh, usually this is pretty straightforward, like with the circadian rhythm over here, I have a swing knob and I can set whether or not I want 8th note or 16th note and I can play around with that. This is what it sounds like. Let's have a listen and you can see what it does. Usually, sequencers are quite limited to only being able to do either 8th note swing or 16th note swing. You have some control over how much swing you have, like Roland has a very iconic uh, 909 swing and stuff like that. But usually that's kind of uh, the end of the road. So when it really comes to micro timing and stuff like that, you're kind of left to your own devices. And uh, this was something that uh, frustrated me to no end because I wanted to do some more complex groove and timing and feel and stuff like that. Like everyone who's ever listened to a good dub record knows that um, groove can get really crazy if um, if you have a good musician at the helm. And I was kind of looking for ways on how to make a modular system do the same thing. And I think I figured out a patch uh, to make this work. And I'd like to share that patch with you guys. Anyway, let's give it a try. If you uh, analyze a clock signal, what you will see is that basically it's not much more than a sequence of evenly spaced um, uh, pulses. Uh, you hook these up to your sequencers and everything, and based on the number of pulses uh, that you feed into a sequencer, uh, that sequencer knows how fast something needs to play, or uh, how fast the sequence needs to progress. In the realm of sequencers, you have a couple of different kinds, and there's different ways of how a sequencer uh, reads uh, its BPM or its tempo from uh, the incoming clock uh, source. Um, for this example, we're just going to assume that all sequencers that we're using are very dumb sequencers that don't do any incoming uh, signal processing and stuff like that. Uh, the reason why this is important, uh, we'll talk about that later, but uh, for now let's assume that we only have uh, dumb clocks. So yeah, basically you could say that a clock signal is uh, just a square wave oscillator uh, in uh, in a low enough frequency that it's actually uh, useful. So let's actually put that to the test. Um, uh, I have here a square wave oscillator. Uh, you see it right here. Um, I'm not even using the square wave. I'm using a saw wave on this one right now. And um, uh, so the most important part actually is that I have an edge and every time an edge on the wave uh, passes a point it gives a trigger and that trigger is useful for all kinds of stuff. So in this case I'm using just an oscillator and it's set to a pretty low frequency. Um, if I plug this into a hi-hat you're gonna hear uh, that, it's, uh, that it has a repeating pattern. So let's have a listen. If I plug this into a hi-hat this is what you're gonna hear. You see? So uh, basically, this is just giving us a continuous trigger uh, pattern right now. You could use this uh, saw wave as um, a clock signal and uh, feed it to all kinds of stuff. Um, but right now, it's just going to behave like a straight, uh, like a straight clock, and there's nothing really interesting going on uh, with it. So if we want to actually do something cool with it, uh, we're gonna have to sequence it somehow. Let's 
follow the patch that I'm using here right now. Um, I have this saw wave going into a mold, and that mold is going uh, with one signal into the ear 101, and with another signal, I'm sending it off to um, uh, um, I'm sending it off to a hi hat. Here's the signal for that. That one's going here. Like you can have listened to it. Very interesting. And uh, so yeah, that's the entire flow of the clock. Now, um, here's the sequencer, which is receiving uh, its clock from uh, the oscillator and in turn is using its uh, first track uh, to uh, influence um, the pitch or the speed of that very oscillator. So what you get is some sort of feedback loop in a way where uh, the sequencer that we're using to manipulate the frequency of this oscillator is in turn receiving its clock from the very oscillator that it's uh, controlling. What this does is that every step it progresses, it will read a new note and that note is going to give it control information on the frequency uh, for the duration of the note that we are uh, stuck on. Let's play around with this patch and see what it actually does. Right. So as you can see, I have one track on my ear 101. Um, and this track is going to be influencing uh, the speed of the oscillator that I just showed you guys. And uh, through that, we're going to manipulate uh, the hi-hat uh, groove. I'm just going to plug in the hi-hat so that you can listen uh, to what's going to change as I uh, input some notes. So right now, as you can see, I just have a very straight pattern and there's only two steps. Like, let's have a look. If we put it in follow mode, both are set to a C. The C doesn't really matter in this case, but that's just uh, uh, the way the sequencer intervals right now. Now, let's say I change the value on the second note. And what you're going to see is that we're going to get some swing. You see? All of a sudden, we have kind of a groove going. Now, this is fun. But you could do that just with your normal sequencer. So what's going to make this more interesting is if we're going to make alternating groove patterns from here. And all of a sudden we get a little bit of a wonky groove where we have full control over yeah what you see now is that all of a sudden we have full control over how exactly this clock is going to behave because from now on we're individually spacing all of the pulses in this clock and giving them a new distance based on what we want this uh, groove to be. So basically what this allows us to do is uh, create complex groove um, patterns. We can, uh, for example, analyze the groove of a dub or a reggae drummer or something like that and go like, ah, okay, the feel is going to be something like this and you're going to want to delay the third note out of this groove and then uh, the seventh, but then we also need a little bit of a delay on the kick on the second drop and stuff like that. And before you know it, you are not just swinging with an interval of two uh, uh, pulses, but you are going full on changing everything over a course of a 16 uh, pulse measure, uh, if that's what you want to do. Or you can go even crazier. You can start uh, making accelerandos or ritornutos or whatever. You can really go very full on classical timing if that's what you desire to do. And you're no longer stuck to uh, just the spacing between two pulses to get your groove to find from it. Now let's have a listen and see what happens if we use this clock pulse uh, to actually make a drum groove, for example. Right, what I have now is a very simple groove. Uh, I'm using a kick, a clap, and two different hi-hats. And um, I am still using uh, the same clock source as I was using just now. So uh, it's still just the oscillator. And I'm gonna play it first in its uh, unsequenced uh, form, and then I'm gonna use um, the clock sequencing uh, to play it. So let's have a listen. Uh, this one is without uh, any swing whatsoever, just a straight ahead groove, uh, just, just so you get a feel of it. Uh-huh. Yeah, so 
very straightforward. Now I'm gonna do it again, and then I'm gonna um, run the sequencer on this. And then we'll see what the groove is that we'll end up with. You see? And all of a sudden... Now, all of a sudden, the groove that we just uh, sequenced or programmed in is going to apply to the entire sequencer. Um, note, this is where my remark earlier about smarter dumb sequencers came in. I have found out that uh, not all sequencers uh, treat incoming clock signals the same. Uh, for example, some sequencers uh, use clock multiplication on the incoming signal to determine um, uh, their... Uh, their clock speed, and these give very erratic uh, results when using an uh, irregular clock. So if you want to really take full advantage of something like this, what you really want to have is a really analog style uh, incoming clock um, processor, or in other words, just if it reads a pulse, it's going to progress one step. And uh, absolutely nothing can sit in between uh, the incoming clock signal and how the sequencer actually runs. Otherwise, you're going to get all kinds of weird glitches and artifacts um, in your groove, and it's not going to be your incentive result. So um, I found that the dupe for a 157 is a prime example of a dumb sequencer, which is perfect in this case, uh, whereas if I'm using the circadian rhythm, it's tripping balls and it's just not doing what I want it to do. So uh, in this case, I highly recommend uh, using a sequencer with no uh, um, special features or functions or whatsoever on the incoming clock signal. Otherwise, you're not going to get any fun out of it. Um, all right, with that being said, um, I have made a... Um, I'm using this groove template now, uh, which is really just four notes spaced uh, a, little bit, uh, a little bit randomly. But you can do a lot of more wild stuff with this. Here, I'll give you one example of some cool things that you can do with this. And from there on, uh, I trust that you're gonna, probably going to uh, have your mind run wild uh, on things that you can do with this. Uh, when you're uh, using an external sequencer to uh, manipulate the clock that you have incoming, uh, you'll want to make sure that your clock is actually starting its swing cycle or its groove template at the right point. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking one signal, um, like here, this cable right here, um, which is coming out of uh, the bottom row. And the bottom row really only has a trigger pulse right at the first step. And that's going to be my reset. Uh, that's what I'm using as a reset output right now. Um, some sequencers have like an, uh, an actual reset output or, uh, or some other things, but I usually um, uh, program them in uh, this way. Um, and this reset output is going to be pretty damn handy for uh, some kind of things. Like... Um, what happens if you have a second sequencer that you're running at a different clock speed, but you do want it to time uh, its reset points roughly at the cycle of your full beat. And all of a sudden you get very weird wonky beats that um, are kind of related to each other, but not quite. Let's have a listen. Okay, so what I have running right now is um, pretty simple. I have... Uh, my A157 sequencer over there, uh, which is being sequenced by uh, the Macbeth oscillator, but any square wave or whatsoever kind of oscillator with an edge will do. Um, the oscillator is being sequenced by my ear 101, but really any sequencer that accepts uh, slightly wobbly clocks will uh, behave just fine. And over here, I have a circadian rhythm, which is completely unrelated to any of these uh, incoming clock signals or whatsoever. But uh, the only thing that it does have is uh, a reset, which is timed to uh, the A157. Now, let's see if we can get these um, compartments to actually groove together a little bit. So I'm going to play this one. I love the Fracture and the Chimera. These two things sound fantastic. So, yeah, here. This one is grooving at a certain BPM. I can play around with the uh, with the tempo a little bit. Now, let's have a listen to the other one. 
Uh, this one is completely unrelated. Now let's see if we can actually mix these two together in a way that's somewhat meaningful. Uh, let's see what happens. Right on. So as you can hear now, I must say I like this. So as you can hear now, uh, what I actually did here was I shifted around the circadian rhythm uh, clock speed a little bit until it was closely resembling the average BPM of the other sequencer, but not quite. And then because of the reset, which is resetting it at um, uh, at useful intervals, um, it starts kind of behaving in uh, time or in sync, but not quite. Like you have two moving parts with their own intrinsic feel to it, but um, they are playing together nicely in a certain way. And this slight variance in groove is going to give you a result which is a little bit more interesting to listen to than just having your regular straightforward swing. Yeah, you can have all kinds of little micro timings and swing feels and stuff like that going on if you make your own clock signals this way. Um, it takes a little bit getting used to and getting into your system, but basically once you really get the hang of this, your patches will start sounding a lot more wonky and groovy and, and vibey in a way than when you're just having a straight ahead uh, clock. Yeah, for everyone out there who was looking for ways to get their clocks running a little bit messy, um, this uh, video was for you. Uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, if you get any awesome results from this, um, definitely link your videos uh, and stuff like that in the comments because I am very curious to hear what you guys are going to do with this. Um, I hope this video was helpful in any way. If you have any suggestions or ideas for other videos or themes to cover, uh, let me know. Thank you so much. Cheers. <laughs>